I'm here to interview Emma's yarn. We have Aspen and Emma here talking with us. And I wanted to start today um, by just hearing about your backstory and how your business got started. Okay, so I'm Emma. Um, and we started out, well, I started out dyeing yarn when I was 15 as a homeschool project with my mom just in our kitchen. Um, I needed to learn a little bit of chemistry and color theory. And so because my mom owns a yarn shop, we thought that that would be a fun way to do it. And so I just dyed a little bit and I sold it in her store and everybody loved it so much. So when Aspen graduated from college, she joined me and that's when our business really took off is when Aspen was there helping and all that fun stuff. So, yeah. And so do you both do some of the dyeing or does one of you do more admin and one do dyeing? How do those roles play out? We both do a little bit of all of it. Um, we both dye yarn. We kind of have our specific colors that we do. Um, and then Aspen's really good at all of the business end. I'm just kind of learning how to do that as I, <laughs> as I get a little bit older. <laughs> yeah, so when I started, um, when I joined Emma, the per my purpose was to kind of put a business end to Emma's yarn, to Emma's creativity, her colors. And um, in doing all of that, I also learned how to dye and fell in love with it. So we, we both create colorways. We both do a lot of the dyeing and we both, both also do a lot of the background stuff. So like Emma does a lot of the social media. I'll do a lot of the corresponding with yarn shops. And um, yeah, we kind of split the work that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And what have you found um, have been challenges that you've had to overcome in making your business uh, really come to life? Um, I think for me, starting out is, um, I didn't really know much about having a business. And so I feel like that was my struggle at first. But then once Aspen came, it was a lot easier to understand. And then I had somebody that kind of knew what they were doing um, really start it. So that, that's personally, that was my issue, I feel like, or like my struggle. Um, and I guess I would say that I secretly had the same struggles as Emma, but um, <laughs> our mom is really, really great. And she owns the yarn shop and she is like awesome businesswoman. So she has been a great help to us in like getting things rolling and um, helping us overcome obstacles as they as they come our way. Yes. <laughs> That's great. So your um, your mom sells the yarn in her shop, right? Along with lots of other tools and yarn as well. Yes. So we are a wholesale company. And we sell our yarn to yarn shops who sell to customers. So we sell to, we're in lots and lots of yarn shops all over the U.S. and a yarn shop in the U.K., which is really cool. Um, so, yeah, we are wholesale only. <laughs> That's great. So uh, we're so grateful that you um, were able to make this special yarn line for us. And, um, you know, when we had this project idea, we just sent you um, a couple of color palette ideas. And from that, you came up with these beautiful colors. So can you tell us a little bit about your color design process and how you test colors and get to that um, those color palette choices? So usually if somebody wants a custom color, they'll kind of send us an idea of a color scheme that they want. And just then, like you did. Yeah, just like you. Um, and then we kind of work on yarn based off of those pictures, you know? Yeah, so we will com we'll combine dyes and we'll do a trial and error process most of the time where we'll test a whole bunch of different things, pick our favorites and, um, and keep adding from there. And so we like are always trying new things because we are finding our own inspiration in everything. And then we also 
work with a lot of people who ha have us do custom colorways. So it's really just like, we know our dyes really well. And when we are really good at finding like the perfect dye and mixing it with the other perfect dye to make the perfect <laughs> color, it's just a lot of trial and error. Yeah. But it's really, it's really rewarding to develop custom colorways. It's really fun. So how much time has to go into that color testing? I mean, I, you know, I'm sure it's different for everyone, but is that like 25% of the process or I'm um, guessing it's a lot of it. Yeah, honestly, color development, it can either be like, we get it right on the first try or we're like trying, 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 trying to get this color. But as soon as we get a color developed, the process of getting it dyed, getting it um, ready to send out goes by fairly quickly but the color development I would say is 75% of the, the process because yeah. it it can take so many different tries, tries to get just the right thing right yeah and how many or excuse me what kind of um tools do you use for that and how did you develop your sense of color? Do you both just naturally have a really good sense of color? Did you study art? Where does that come from? Um, well, we both grew up in our parents' yarn shop. I mean, we have been helping people pick out their yarn and their projects, like, since we walk. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> we um, definitely have gained a color sense from that. <laughs> and so, years and years and years of putting together projects, picking colors for that has translated really well into the, into the dyeing. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, you had a lot of practice as children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so how do you um, manage, you know, when someone comes to you with a special custom color that they want to have, but um, maybe it's really different than your personal taste in color or what you like. So how do you kind of play with trends versus um, your own personal taste? I think that Aspen and I both kind of have our own personal taste in color. So that makes it a lot easier for us to we do can, custom color. We can cover the board. Yeah. Yes, we have very different <laughs> color tastes. Yes. I, I like a lot of the bright, vibrant colors, and Aspen's more of like the neutral. earthy tones, the yeah. neutrals, that's where I'm at. So um, when, we, when we get color inspiration from somebody and, it, and it's a bright, vibrant color, Emma usually is like, oh yes, I know, where, I know what we're doing. <laughs> and we get more of like a moody, neutral color, like I'm the same way. Um, so that that tends to work out pretty well but there are times where like the trending color is not either our, what we would maybe lean towards for ourselves, for ourselves but yeah. it's not that we have but we can nice appreciate team. i feel like i can appreciate out of all of our colors i wouldn't say that anything is ugly i can appreciate anything even if it's like not my personal taste you know what i mean yeah i think that that shows your True appreciation for color <laughs> in general. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our mom hates purple. She does mm -hmm. not like purple. And so, but when we develop a purple, she it, can appreciate it. it. She yeah. always loves it. So it's funny <laughs> the way that that works. Yeah. Well, we really loved working with you guys. And, um, is there anything else that you wanted to mention about just your business and what you do and what yarns are available, that kind of thing? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, our, we are always collaborating with designers, which is really fun. Um, we have a pattern that's coming out next month by Casa Pinka, who's a really big knitwear designer. And um, so we're, we've been really busy working on that. And we have a color of the month club that we do every single month, which is really fun. And that honestly takes up a lot of our time because we develop a new colorway every single month. 
and um, people subscribe to that club and they get the color every month or they'll pick it out at their yarn shop on the months that they like that color. And um, it's been really, really great for us because we get to keep ourselves inspired all the time, always creating something new, which um, that, I think that's my favorite part of the business. Mm -hmm. And how do you, um, do people just come to you who are interested in doing a custom project or do you um, generate that business in any kind of way or is it just organic? Um, it goes both ways, mm -hmm. I would say. It, um, we have, we've reached out to designers and, and sent them yarn and, and they've designed our yarn where we've reached out to them or it's gone the way where they've had an idea, they've come to us and we've jumped on board. So I would say that it kind of goes both ways. Yeah. Uh, well, we're, I'll look forward to seeing your next pattern come out. And um, we'll of course put links to your website and um, that in the description for this video. So okay. make sure people um find you guys <laughs> it sounds like you're doing you're having a lot of business on your own though maybe you don't need anyone else to find you so um yeah our our website has a list of um yarn shops that carry our yarn so okay people can find our yarn at any of the local yarn shops on our website okay great